This is Teachable Moments with April podcast, and you guessed it, I'm your host, April. If you're a returning listener and a part of the Teachable Moments with April podcast family, welcome back. For those of you who are checking me out for the first time, well, hello and welcome. To everyone listening, look for the Teachable Moments that are all around you. Enjoy. A prayer for wisdom and spiritual discernment. Heavenly Father, I come to you because I need wisdom that only your spirit can give me. Help me to lean not solely on my own opinions and my own understanding, thoughts or dreams. I need godly, not earthly wisdom, Lord. Please supply me in knowledge and truth as I battle these tough decisions and uncertainty. Father, open my eyes to the barriers holding me back from spiritual progress and help me to walk confidently as I discern the next steps I need to take in my life. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, I ask. Amen. host April of Teachable Moments with April podcast. So we're going to continue the conversation about the holiday Easter. What is what is its origins? That's what we uh, discussed. We started discussing in the first episode uh, before this one. Um, we went through talking about um, a controversy and a debate that um, that took place for centuries between Easter and Passover. Which one is a holiday? Which one is a holy day? Um, and its observance of of Jesus, his life, his resurrection, um, and so forth and so on, or something else, meaning um, certain god and goddesses and fertility rites and other other things that have nothing to do um, with with God and his son and the sacrifice um, the Lamb of God now in this particular episode as I said we're going to continue now we're going to explore more and we're going to talk about first off how a new worship theme was formed and transformed into what we know now to be Easter. So as Easter replaced actually Passover, not only was a new date selected, which is the Sunday after the spring equinox, rather than the biblically directed Nisan 14, but like we said, a new theme was introduced. Rather than commemorating Christ's death as directed by the scriptures, at 1 Corinthians 11:26, the new holiday was designed to celebrate his resurrection. Now, this new theme easily accommodated, okay, the pagan fertility symbols that have been already introduced because we already talked about in the first episode is that the celebration of Easter actually happened before even Christ was alive, okay? He came to earth he was already celebrating in some form Easter already, okay? But they're incorporating something that they were celebrating before into this whole thing under the nice little package of they're celebrating his resurrection. So it also helped distinguish the Christian community, okay? So we, we talked about in the, in the previous episode about their issues being um, with um, separating separating themselves from the Jewish culture and Judaism. So this was going to distinguish the Christian community from the Jews, which is a major goal of church leaders of the time, okay? Now, although Christ's resurrection is, it is, that's not what we're saying, is an important basis of our hope as believers, and we too can be resurrected, okay? And it was critical, okay, for God's plan of salvation to continue. 
neither God the Father, Christ, nor Scripture has ever explicitly directed us to celebrate this particular event, meaning Easter, okay? Not Passover, we're talking about Easter, okay, to make the distinction, okay? So his resurrection is important. Jesus Christ, every aspect of his life, okay, and his coming back and everything and God's plan is important. This is not what we're this is not what we're saying, but the whole thing of how we celebrate it now and what was behind it informed it and made a whole nother um, holiday uh, of worship allegedly. So indeed, the love of God is primarily expressed to all humanity through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And there's a reference at John 3.16 as well as Hebrews 9.28. Now his death, through which our sins may be forgiven, is the primary focus of the Passover, okay, not his resurrection. Many precise details of his death and events leading up to and encompassing it were prophesied in Hebrew scriptures hundreds of years in advance. Now the decision of God, of our Father, to willingly give his only begotten Son, and of Christ to surrender his life to torture and execution as a sacrifice for the sins of humanity for us, were far more demanding than the demonstrating of God's power over death through the resurrection. Now, there is more to consider. The Bible discusses sin and our need for forgiveness and reconciliation to God, which is the theme of the biblically commanded Passover and the days of unleavened bread. So we talked about the holy days. We talked about the Sabbath. That's in another episode that I did. Also, and I used um, the basis, of course, first and foremost, is the Bible. Secondly, was also this particular publication, By Beyond Today. Um, it says, far more often than the subject of the resurrection. So within the King James Version of the Bible, the word sin, did you know, is used 447 times compared with the word resurrection being used only 41 times. So let's don't forget that sin was actually the cause of Christ's death. Only by repenting of our sins and being reconciled to God, our Father, by the death of Christ, can we be assured of being resurrected. Now, this is not to minimize the importance of Christ's resurrection. So, we're reiterating this again. It too is a crucial step in the salvation process. After being reconciled to God the Father by the death of His Son, ultimately we are saved by Christ's life as He pleads for us in the role of our High Priest and lives in us through the Holy Spirit, helping us to overcome sin. The process of our coming out of sin is pictured okay, in the biblical feast immediately following Passover, which is the days of unleavened bread, during which Christ's resurrection actually occurred. Now, again, though, the Bible nowhere instructs Christians to keep a special celebration of Christ's resurrection, nor is there a biblical record of early Christians doing so. But it is clear that both Christ and Apostle Paul expected Christ's followers to commemorate his sacrificial death on our behalf in a special ceremony. And there is a reference, some references at Matthew 26, 26 and, and 28 through 28, as well as 1 Corinthians 5, 7, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. So nonetheless, the celebration of Easter, it still prevailed. Those who remained faithful to Christ's example of keeping the Passover in the days of unleavened bread decreased in number and were persecuted by those actually favoring to embrace this new holiday known as Easter. Now, although how God views humanly devised changes in the worship he commands will be considered later on, okay, but let's just look how the traditions of this particular holiday holiday, not holy day, fail to match the biblical record that is in what God gave us, inspired through man, 